So in today's video, I'm going to be breaking down an emotional hip hop track that I recently got signed to a library so that you guys can learn how to write and structure your tracks for TV and film placements. Chase Freedom. Okay, everybody, welcome back for another video. So this particular track was written to be used in true crime types of TV shows. So think uh, the show Dope on Netflix. So basically it's a hip hop beat that has emotional tones to it. So think about a scene where they're following in the backseat of the car with a drug dealer that's telling his story about how he just has no choice. He has to be in the drug game and he hates what he has to do to people, etc. You know, it's obviously not going to be like a party type of hip hop beat. It's going to be something emotional, something that invokes that type of feeling. There's a lot of piano. There's a lot of ambient uh, melody stuff going on here. So let's get into it. Okay, so I'm going to play the intro section here for you really quick. One thing that's even more true in the sync industry uh, than when you're making beats for artists is the intro has to be really short. So as you can tell in this piece, I actually started right out the gate with the drum beat. It's catching the listener's ear right away. So in that first section, you already kind of have the vibe of the track. And then you'll notice every four bars, there's a change up, which is 100% what you have to do when you are writing for sync. So I have nice transitions. I have right here the reverse vocal swell um, and then a cymbal and a snare roll that brings it in. And then into the next section has a different piano line. Uh, I actually layered it with another loop here, a cymatics loop and a moog bass. So. These two sections keeps the same melodies. Uh, here I, I half time this. Uh, I turned it up a little bit too, so it's stronger in the mix. And then like the full beat is introduced here with the 808 and everything like that. And then the next section it'll break it down, so it drops out the hi hats. I even chop up the 808 so they're not hitting every time too. And that essentially takes us through our first four sections. When you're writing for sync, you typically go into, you either introduce more instruments or you introduce a twist on the melody. Uh, this one I actually introduced a completely different melody. So this is the B section, but it carries over the same type of vibe. So I'll, I'll play from the transition here. section works as a breakdown too and it really breaks down right here before going back to the A section. And you always have to make sure you're ending with that stinger ending as I do here. So it's that definitive ending. You know that the track is over. It gives you that option to uh, cut to commercial. So that's that, that's the end of the scene and it's gonna cut to commercial or it's gonna cut to another piece, totally changing the scene. That's what the stinger ending is used for. So aside from that, this is a, a kit that I have saved. Um, this is actually the kit that I used in the track I produced for Richie Sosa called Church. I'll leave the link in the description for that actually. You can go check it out on Spotify if you want. It's kind of like my biggest accolade from my music producer standpoint because it's something that I engineered, something that I mixed, and a beat that I made completely from scratch for myself. So this is, this is just the drums um, and the 808 and everything here. Nothing crazy. Then you have the piano and this dark melody here, which they're, they're really ambient, if you can tell. So like, I don't know if you guys hear when I play this, but to me, it gives that nighttime feel, that very urban city type of vibe, and it's emotional, right? You know that something's going on. Somebody's doing something that's intense. So that is essentially it. Yeah, the things that I want to point out is like, look how much that I'm using the transition pieces. 
Uh, I think that it's really key to keep the forward momentum of the piece going. I know you're, you're changing it up every four bars, but it, it's useful, right? Because then maybe the editor wants to just start using it right from this point. So you have the, the crash that comes in and it's, it's like that impact. So you know, like this, the scene is just starting, right? So. But that's it, you gotta get really creative. You know, I could have kept the same 808 pattern going here, but I chopped it up and I just let the single note run out. And as you can see uh, on the MIDI, there's, there's slight differences, even though it's the same. The low notes aren't here. Because let me tell you, I submitted track after track of beats that I had made previously where I thought that, okay, well in this four bar pattern, I'm just gonna cut out the 808. Um, and this one, I'm gonna cut out the kick. And then in this one, I'm gonna just make it the hi-hats and the kick in the 808. It doesn't work like that. It can't be a four bar loop just every four bars you're taking one or two things out. There has to be new things introduced. There has to be a sense of forward momentum and just overall a little bit more creativity in how you write it. Because again, if you're new to this, the thing is is that this whole thing isn't gonna be used. There's probably gonna be seven seconds or 15 seconds used. So by doing this, you're giving the editor or the music supervisor all these options of different ways to use your track on the TV shows. So that's it for today's video. If you do have any questions about this or you have any suggestions about content that you wanna see me make in the future, please feel free to drop them in the comments. All I want to achieve here is my growth, put it out on this platform to help other people grow as well. So let's work together, let's connect, and I will catch you guys in the next video.